Welcome back to the channel. For this video series, we're going to walk through how to take a Flask application, Dockerize it, and push it to AWS automatically using a CI CD pipeline. Before we get started, you can help me out a lot by doing a few simple things. Support me on either Patreon or GitHub sponsors, link is in the description below. Subscribing to the channel, liking this video, and sharing on platforms you use like Discord or Reddit, star in the repo on GitHub, and also follow me on GitHub. All these things help me out a lot and I really appreciate it. So to preface this whole series, this is not a series where I'm going to teach you how to code in Python, nor am I going to teach you how to build a Flask application. It's not the point of this series. The point of this series is to get you familiar with the AWS components necessary to host a Flask application on AWS and also how to create a CI, CD, continuous integration, continuous deployment pipeline using GitHub Actions to allow you to automatically update your web application on AWS using GitHub Actions instead of having to do anything manually. So the outline for this series is pretty extensive because we're going to be covering a lot of different things. First, we're going to create the necessary AWS components. We're going to code a simple Hello World Flask application. Again, the emphasis is not on Flask, it's on AWS. We're going to Dockerize that Flask application. We're going to push that Flask app to GitHub inside the Docker container. We're going to create a CI, CD, continuous integration, continuous deployment workflow using GitHub Actions that's going to allow us to automatically take that Flask application inside a Docker container on GitHub and push it to AWS. We're going to access that app via a Route 53 domain. We connect the Flask app to AWS RDS, which is the relational database service. So we're going to add a database on AWS and connect it to our Flask application. We're going to store private values in AWS Secrets Manager instead of having to do anything with the .env file or environment variables. We're going to schedule stops and starts of our EC2 instance hosting our application in the case that we want to not be running at 24-7 to save on cost. And finally, we're going to automate alerts. So if the ECS instance fails, meaning that our application is no longer running, we'll get an email alert letting us know that it failed so we can respond immediately instead of having to wait for the consumers of our application to tell us that it's not working. There's a lot of stuff we're covering, so there's a lot of components on AWS we're using as well. They include the Identity Access and Management, IAM, which we're going to use to create a user on AWS with certain permissions to be able to do everything we need to do and interact with all the resources we need on AWS to host this Flask application. We're going to use Elastic Compute Cloud, referred to as EC2. If you know AWS at all, you've probably heard EC2. It's going to actually host the web application. Elastic Container Registry, this is the container registry for our Docker image. It's going to hold the Docker image versions that we have. Container Service, this is going to pull the Docker image from ECR and connect it to EC2. Application Load Balancer, this is going to sit in front of our application to, to allow traffic through it. Access Control List, this is going to allow us to restrict access to our application. It's going to use a similar method to firewalls and port mappings, allowing traffic through certain ports with certain IPs. Route 53, this is going to allow us to select the domain name that we want and attach it to our Flask application. Relational Database Service, this is the database on AWS that we're going to be using to connect to our Flask application. We're going to be using Postgres. Secrets Manager, this is AWS solution for, for storing private information, private variables that you want to give restricted access to. And finally, CloudWatch. This is what we're going to use to monitor our application to let us know immediately through an email alert if our application goes down. So we're going to be covering a lot in this video series. For any video, if anything isn't confusing or if you have a question, just leave a comment below and I'll respond as quickly as I can to help you out. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the rest.